Kaylee, would you like to lead us? Sure. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, did we uh, have a chance for everybody to take a look at the uh, council minutes for the 26th and the 9th? Want to break them out separately? Are there any changes, additions, or corrections to be made? First to the 26th. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, how about the 9th? Any corrections? Move to approve. Let's, let's make the motion to approve both. Yes. Smith made the motion to approve both. Goodman seconded. Those in favor? Okay. Thank you. I was just showing you how to raise your hand. Don't count me. I was just showing. I got it. I knew it wasn't your first day here. Yep. Okay, and then the Board of Public Works and Safety for uh, July 14th and the 28th are in your packets for information only. Okay, well, first thing on our agenda under communications, I have the honor of, first of all, greeting Troop Number 220 of the Boy Scouts of America, again, back to, uh, back to our meeting. City Council meeting. How many are you uh, getting a credit tonight because of a public meeting? Let's see. Show of hands. No. They're not sure. They're not sure. <laughs> okay. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you get credit. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I do believe you're all here in support of your scout colleague, Kaylee Tassonia, right? Yeah. Right. That's that's the big big deal tonight, right? No, me. That way, thank you very much for that. So, without further ado, Kaylee, would you have stepped forward here in front of uh, the council and before I come down and read this to you? I'd like for you to meet Councilman Wilson there on the end. Let's show up, give him the grip. Okay, all right. <laughs> Councilman Thompson. Now, see, he threw you off. Did you still have a good grip? Did you? Very good. Councilwoman Gunter. Councilman Goodman. And Councilman Smith. Did you notice how nice he is? How he stood up while everybody else sat down? <laughs> so he, he, he's been around a while. Okay, well, Kaylee is here because uh, she just made a very, very special accomplishment here. You are an Eagle Scout, correct? Yes. And uh, adding to that, you're the very first Eagle Scout in Fulton County. It's a female, right? Yep. Wonderful. I'm going to put you on the spot. You know how many other Eagle Scouts we have in Fulton County? Not sure. Okay, now let me give you another little secret. If you throw out a number, no one's going to know. <laughs> <laughs> now you know the mayor's secret. <laughs> or, or just say at least one more. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I've got a lot. What was it? Rochester. Quite, quite a few in Rochester. Quite, quite a few. Well, it's 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 quite an honor, uh, and I'm sure you know. Remember Cody Keeper? Yeah. Uh, about five six years ago, Cody. I stood at his uh, celebration for being an Eagle Scout, made a presentation to him. I have a picture of that on my board in my office, called the Wall of Pride. Then his grandmother gave me a picture of Cody today to put next to it. And you know what he's doing today? He's in the Marine Corps. And it's a picture of Cody in his dress blues. You go into the service as an Eagle Scout, you get immediate credit in pay. You get more pay than the other recruit coming in, and a bump in rank. Did you know that? Okay. Well, let me tell you something else about being an Eagle Scout. Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm spot on with this. If you want to go to one of the military academies, They'll give you preference because you're an Eagle Scout. So it's a really big deal. 
with all that being said, this is going into the permanent record here in minutes tonight. Special City of Rochester Proclamation. Whereas the City of Rochester, Indiana, and its mayor, the Honorable Theodore J. Denton, proclaim August the 23rd, 2022, Kaylee DeSonia Day. Whereas Ms. DeSonia is being honored for obtaining the status of Eagle Scout with Troop Number 220 under the leadership of Scoutmaster Burl Keel. Whereas Ms. DeSonia completed the seven ranks to Eagle Scout status in approximately three years, making her the first female scout to accomplish this task in Fulton County, Indiana. Note, Kaylee will be honored by the Rochester City Council by inclusion of this presentation into the permanent records of council minutes for 823-22, and she'll be honored by Mayor Denton with a presentation of the mayor's pen for patriotism and service. The other scouts who receive the mayor's pen is called Pulse. We wear it every day. Plus, get a copy of the proclamation and some extras that I've included for family members. Okay. I think I got them. I didn't get one that was oversized, I'm telling you. So there you go. And we applaud our That's Lexi, Lily, her brother's behind her, um, from 219, Alex, and then Ava and Evelyn. Okay, but wasn't there someone even Um, And more my mom, that's my uh, <laughs> assistant scoutmaster. That's here tonight. How about your mom? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and my mother and my Uh, I might 
mentioned other projects, we continue to move forward with them. None of them, uh, except for the waste treatment plant, that one. Of course, that was well underway before the uh, inflationary situation hit our radar screen. And basically, folks, we're in a recession. People just don't want to admit it. You can have to pay $8 for a roasted chicken out of the grocery store. Uh, that's something that's different, where you go over and try and find the grapefruit that hasn't been in for two months. You're in, you're in kind of a recession. So uh, we're continuing with our programs that we had monies budgeted for that are going to come in, and, and uh, the contractors are working with us with those figures. And the waste treatment plant is moving forward, and you know, we're going to have that finished up by the end of the year. Uh, we meet monthly on that and discuss any of the issues that come up, and there are many that come up. It's almost like the model of the restaurant. You know, there's always an issue, isn't there? Isn't there? <laughs> there there's always an issue, and then and, and that gets down to are we going to pay extra? Or, or is there an alternative? So far, we've been able to work those things out. Okay. Uh, <coughs> any questions regarding any of that? All right. Uh, next on the agenda is city building code violations. And that's why. I'm sorry. You need to open your public hearing. For the oh, I'm for the sorry. Budget. That's that's a public hearing. Okay. Yes, for the budget. Do I have a motion to open the public? So moved. I'll second. second. Seconded by Gunner, moved by Goodman. Those in favor? Okay, we'll open the public hearing regarding uh, city building code violations. No, 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 no. Budget, no, the budget. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, that's what your that's what your arrow. I thought your arrow was going to budget. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to the second one, but okay, so we're going to talk about So first, okay, we'll talk about the budget. Okay, Shada, yes, you have the floor. I handed it to Brian. Okay, Brian. <laughs> he just she asked for it, so he hasn't delegated it to you. I assumed I was going to be reading it. You're going to make me read it line by line, so I was getting proud. <laughs> Shadow, why don't you help me out a little bit? Um, sure. So to open the public hearing, essentially we have estimated civil max levy for 2023 budget is going to be $3,484,331. The property tax credit estimate will be $311,700. So <coughs> tax supported levies, we are talking the general fund, motor vehicle highway fund, cumulative fire park, and cumulative capital development. The other funds are non-tax supported funds. So our total budget, estimated budget for 2023, this includes federal and state grant funds, which really exploded the budget high just because we're anticipating some of those grants coming in. $12,643,650 and the estimated funds to be raised by the levies will be $3,668,790 and therefore leaving our current tax levy set at $3,319,234. The percentage difference in budgeting is oh, average because we have an increase of 40 percent and a decrease of 37 percent uh, an increase of 15 percent for kim fire park is 29 uh, and ccd is 15. so yeah not, yeah it's about the same as our previous conversation just tonight's open for public comment or questions yeah, you were all uh, there for the budget session. Uh, there's nothing new here. We're having to uh, roll the numbers, crunch it better, and bump up uh, some places where we need to bump up. Um, anybody have any questions up there? About from the public, any comments? Jillian represents the public tonight. 
there's a little bit of difference in procedure in terms of what due process, if you will, uh, you owe to the to the property owner. So for the unsafe building ordinance, um, the way that works is Heather's office uh, uh, can write a letter uh, uh, either based on a referral from someone or because of a routine inspection, whatever. She can write a letter on your behalf. Um, but before that can have can result in a uh, any kind of court action, that has to come before the council. And that's where we've had those before. And I tell you, your options are, you know, you could you could give them more time, you can deny the request, or you can approve the request. To approve the request, essentially, or affirm, it's essentially to tell my office to go ahead and uh, file a court action. Uh, the the building code does not require that much formality to proceed with a court action. One of the things that was uh, uh, discussed with the uh, development commission is ways we could take all kinds of violations and make property owners more accountable. And one of the things that was contemplated is to reserve some time at maybe uh, uh, every every other uh, uh, board of public works meeting and just bring it there uh, for some regular accountability. You quickly sort out those who are asking for a little more time with those who are blowing you off, okay? And uh, but you don't have to do that. With things that are pure building code issues, uh, you can have a, a standing order to, uh, uh, to Heather's office to say, give them 10 days and then turn over to the city attorney if they don't respond in, in 10 days. Um, that's a little more wide open in terms of what you want to make the checks against them. The, the, I think, and Chief correct me if I, I misremembered part of this, but I think a lot of discussion with the Redevelopment Commission is um, uh, uh, fines are not the most effective way to get people to clean up the property or fix something. It's usually the accountability uh, and seeing whether it's seeing the chief, whether it's seeing the board of public works, whether it's seeing the full council, uh, is that kind of accountability that's going to get people kind of uh, off their complacency to uh, to get something done. Well, and if I may interject, sure. the reason these five are here. They're, they're in front of us basically for a request or a vote for demolition is because they're unsafe, correct? No, um, I'm not here for a request of demolition. Um, they've been on our list for a long time, so I'm here to see what next step you want me to take. Which well, I know at least I... one of these was uh, adjudicated by this council when Casey was in the office to be demolished, and I that's when the owner came forward and did a, gee, I'm going to do this, and give me some time. Race Street. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, you know, before there is a demolition of any property, it has to be uh, adjudicated or voted on by the council. Now, the other ones don't really, I mean, they're not really structurally unsound. They just need some repairs. They, are, they just need fixed up to code. Um, they're not unlivable. They're just the letters aren't doing anything to a lot of us the roofs and the windows and the doors they just need fixed okay, then then are you here to suggest that we turn these then over to andy to go through the litigation process that's fine so, yeah. so, so, so what is that what is the end of that process if we turn it over to you because since this, we're not talking unsafe we're just talking mm -hmm. code violation what is generally two things one is a fine uh the other is an injunction so I would ask the court to order them to do what Shannon has already, I'm sorry, what Heather has already asked them to uh, uh, to do. And if they don't do it, I can request to be held in contempt. Um, so that would be that would be a stick that we don't have yet. Well, I know the one I was okay. referring to, the front end of it had fallen off, and there were it was accessible. The building was kids would get in and doing all sorts of things uh, and that's why it had progressed to the stage it was at. Um, Do you know if these are rental properties or they're actually people living in them? I think most of them are rentals and I know the one on Race Street he's been in violation forever. And that's vacant. Um, it's vacant and we did have a gentleman interested in purchasing it but however the lot is so small he can't do anything with it so if he tears that house down 
he can't build anything on it. So that deterred him from purchasing it. So um, the other ones are <coughs> rentals. I believe all of them are rentals. A couple of them are owned by the same person. Um, it should be in the letters. Um, the one on 1430 Monroe Street. I'm really surprised he hasn't done anything. His it really doesn't need much. He just needs to finish it up. Is that the one that had gone through a fire? There's been a couple, two or three owners. This owner owned it for a while. Yeah. Um, they put siding on it. That's about it. And then I believe Tillman owns two of them. So how many times have you contacted them so far? And they've gotten, received no fines, no anything? Well, there really is no fines in the building code violation. Okay. Um, the two owned by Tillman went on tax sale, but he still owns them, so he must have paid. Um, Race Street, we always ran into that problem, but they've been in violation for over a year. Um, okay. Sometimes letters work, and sometimes that's why I just need to know how you want me to just turn them over to Andy. You want me to make a city council public hearing so you guys can actually speak to the property owners, see what their intentions are, or just straight go to Andy and. Well, I think if we if we showed the addresses to this Andy over here, he can probably also add that uh, there's been code violations relative to the upkeep of their lawn and everything sure. like oh, that. Oh, sure, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we're doing, we're probably doing mowing on some of these now and putting on the tax bill. Okay. I don't know that no. any of this. You don't know that. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> um, the other thing, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but the other conversation that I believe had happened with the redevelopment commission all of that was kicking some of this these preliminary steps over to the board of works to handle for that public presence to start so that way that since the board of works meets twice of or every two weeks it would give more opportunity to get the property owners in here and talking in the public, so I don't. I, do you remember that conversation being part of that when you yeah. guys were talking about that, trying to come up with a process? And then once, if it got to that point where the count, then the council needed to step in to take action because it was actually an ordinance. Well, yeah, and then you're, you're touching on uh, something that Andy touched on. He's been part of discussions with the redevelopment commission, and, as well as Andy Perkins on changing our process for these code violations uh, up to and including uh, uh, a code officer that would work with these people and through the Board of Works uh, give them an opportunity working to a plan to get the and then if they can't follow the plan can't do it then it gets into the statutory part uh, I, yeah, I do remember it being suggested it be de deferred over to the Board of Works. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you, you, the council could kind of bifurcate that and say, look, for the ones that are in front of us, that are building code violations, these are old enough, we want to do X with them. But going forward, why don't we just ask uh, Heather in the future when she writes these up, every time she writes one of these up, to uh, uh, coordinate a date on the Board of Public Works calendar so that in the future, their first stop, once they open the letter, they see, okay, the Board of Works is going to be talking about this in two weeks, I'm going to be there. You know, that, you could split that. You don't have to make, you can make one decision for what's here, then a different decision going forward, since none of that is cast in your ordinance or statute by a particular method, uh, there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. Would it be possible at this point in time for uh, letters to be sent out to each one of these folks again saying this is in fact going to happen the next step will be in, in your court um, I don't know and you may want to weed out quote unquote part of the pun weed out the one that we've dealt with in the past that had gone to condemnation uh, that may need to be a stronger letter there was a, there was some uh, commitments made they didn't happen 
Uh, it's not only gotten worse, it's gotten seriously worse. So condemnation is probably in the, uh, in the picture for that one. And your office hasn't heard from any of these people on any of this? Uh, not for a while, no. Mm -hmm. Well, Kim, could we do that? Use your suggestion, but mm -hmm. maybe you could work with Heather and draft the proper letter. Sure. So that it uh, it has the the right uh, punch to it that we need. Yeah, I need to make sure that, that whatever the minutes reflect the agreement was at that time, I need to make sure we can demonstrate it wasn't complied with. Yes. Otherwise, it might be simpler to hit the reset button on that one and send that send them a new letter. But I'll, I can get with that. Well, I've seen several of these properties, and you know whether they're meeting the uh, requirements of our code situation for condemnation or not, they're still very dangerous properties because they are definitely not being kept up. And I doubt very seriously there's any homeowners insurance involved there. So somewhere along the line, somebody's going to have a problem, and we'll be pulled into it at that time because we will have been reviewing it forever. I don't know, I would suggest that, suggest a letter. Does the council need to actually vote on the final No, no, the council, I don't think the council needs to, okay. to vote on that. I think uh, Heather's office needs, needs some direction as the, 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 kind of the, the party contracted with the city to do the work in some direction as to what, what uh, well, I would, I would like to have a vote to see if we have council support on this. I don't want to just cut council off on this. Anybody have any statements to make? These are very old. No, I think what he's proposed seems like a good idea to me at this point. Make that a motion. Do I have a second? A second. Those in favor? Okay, you guys have a clear direction. So we're, we're, we're proceeding on the ones that are here, but uh, sending sending letters, letters anew in just in case, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's not good. Yeah. There's some traction going, right? Yeah. And I'll check into the uh, condemnation order. I didn't see that one when I looked through everything. So. I'm pretty sure we <laughs> read that one. It was just after the front of it had fallen off hanging down and it's gone now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do that for a day or two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any, anything else to report while you're here with the Area Planning Commission? I just have the um, comprehensive plan. It's completed. And then I had a few amendments that I threw those in there since I was coming to the public notices anyway. So I don't know if you guys looked at them or do you want me to read them for the amendments? We're just a little small handful. How many are there? Um, probably five or six for the city. You want to, you want to just read them? Well, after we had our south of town project come in front of us, I noticed the, the general commercial and the highway commercial um, and then industrial district, they have special exceptions for homes, but there was no minimum floor area requirements. So. We added that language in there. Uh, we added the minimum main floor area of 980 square feet. It's the same as all the residential districts in the Ag District. Just so whatever district allows single family homes, whether permitted or special exception, that we have that code of a size requirement. So we didn't have that in there. Um, didn't no notice that until South of Town came about. So, and then, in the downtown commercial district, we noticed that it said mobile homes were allowed. I believe that was probably a mistake, so we removed that. And we changed the language a little bit on all the districts regarding the lot width and lot frontage, just simply because it has two different measurements and it was very confusing for the public as well as the staff to understand what the difference was between the frontage and the width. So, same language, it's just in there a little different and then we had street cuts curb cuts and storm sewer hookups listed under location improvement permits to be obtained we don't issue those so i removed those from the list as well 
and we are changing our violations. Um, we will now only issue four letters versus nine, so the fines will go up very quickly. Um, we'll still work with people, the ones that are actually cleaning up, but we've just got so many. I mean, Andy probably gets two a week from us that they're just not doing anything. So hopefully this will help, maybe. And then we had a Senate Enrolled Act number 139 that passed. So in the mobile home park districts, we can no longer enforce size requirements on mobile homes. So anything in the mobile home park, we can't tell them what size they can have, minimum size. Right now it's 14 by 70 was our code. I had to scratch that out because we can't tell them that. So. Does that also go right over then into a lot size? Restriction on lot size. Yeah, we still have the restriction on lot size. It's just currently it was in the mobile home anywhere. You couldn't have a, had to be a 14 by 70 or larger. Uh, we cannot enforce that in the mobile home park district. We still can in the ag district, but not the mobile home park. So, and that was all for the city. Okay. And then the comprehensive plan. Anybody have any questions for Heather? Nothing else. Thank you, my dear. Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming. Why don't you, why don't you stop and see us once in a while just to, just to give us a little update and such. Things. It's, uh, how, how's the job going? You've yes. been in it now, so you're probably an old pro at it. Right? It's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to stop in and just visit. We have the plan commission meeting on Monday. We have the city on Wednesday. So I have three meetings in a row when you guys meet. Well, and you have a whole, whole new staff. They're, mm -hmm. they're all pretty pretty new. Uh, they've been there a year now, yeah. in June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you do a good job. It's a, it's a tough job. It you is. do a good job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, sorry, you can email me. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, under. Uh, <laughs> under new business. Uh, <laughs> Red yeah. Grant Cash Commitment. Uh, yeah, I was curious when I saw that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, we got a twenty at five hundred thousand. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, a short report. I did receive confirmation today that even though the Ready Grant is ARPA funds, mm -hmm. you can use your initial ARPA distribution for grant purposes for that grant. There are other grants you cannot do that with, but this Correct. particular one, you can. That, that helps the situation, especially since we're uh, setting our other project on the shelf for a year. I have questions on that. I mean, we, you shared the <coughs> commitment letter, and the county's putting in 500,000, we're putting in 500,000. The in kind match, it's a one to three to one. One public money, three private, and <coughs> one part, the ready grant. And we're going after a million dollars. Correct. That's the Apache uh, Drive expansion, including sidewalks for the school's evacuation route Correct. on 14. So it's a good, it's a good project for the community. And we are, like you said, we are, like Brian said, we are, uh, Doing this in inclusion with the county, it's 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 going to benefit the county. It's going to benefit the city. It's going to benefit the school. Uh, the information that they were asking us to submit, uh, to, that they were taken to the IEDC last week, who administers the funds for the feds, and of course, you know, the president of the North Central Association, Paul Wyman come to us to <clears throat> see if the city had a project that would meet all the uh, criteria for the ready grant uh, because the Meadows project did not. So this is how the Apache Drive project came into play. We gave them information on that and then there was a public meeting that uh, you two attended as well as our, our uh, court treasurer and uh, Martin Davis was there also from the water water board and uh, who else did we have? Oh, John Lowe was there representing the city and uh, there were 
separate pockets of groups from the county and the city. They all believe that that was a worthwhile project to put towards the ready for as, as Wyman did. So we pulled together the information they initially asked for. It. It's gone to them. They've been to the IEDC with it. Now there's about 12 things they're asking for as follow-up information and uh, process of pulling that information together. The uh, engineering folks are USI, who our redevelopment commission uh, on this project has been working with, what, a year? It's about a year. So they have it pretty well designed, our part of it, which was another reason they were anxious to take it forward. We have a pretty nice design laid out from the Apache Drive part that's connecting everything to Highway 14. The thing that was lacking was the sidewalk part of it. The county wanted to bring in and would go down 14 all the way to Goods uh, Funeral Home, which will benefit you know, those people out there walking to school plus the school will benefit, they're including it as part of their uh, uh, procedure for an active shooter. Uh, junior high and high school empty the school because it's an active shooter or such, then the kids will have an access point to get far enough away to be in a safe area. Uh, they, they designated the church out there and also its funeral home as a place to go. And uh, the county is still working with NDOT on the as well as USI on the crossing of the T's and the dotting of the I's for the approvals to do that. We had looked at it seven years ago and NDOT wasn't interested at that point in talking about a sidewalk on a state highway. You don't see too many. So they're in the middle of that now and they say there's some traction coming. It looks like they're, they're not going to get that, that accomplished. So that's where we are with that right now. But it's a uh, it's a, it's a good project. It's one I think we can work together. Mayor, work. if I can interject. Uh, one thing I will need to bring back to the council, and uh, I'll probably do that in September. If the count, if you vote tonight to commit the 500000 I will bring back our resolution for the ARPA money. If you recall, we had had a resolution designated how we were going to spend those funds. So we need to amend that uh, from being our main street project to be uh, potentially Did used for the Apache you make it to Main Street project? I thought we did it for stormwater. Yeah, well, still, it was stormwater. I'd have to reword it. I think I left it, but we may, but I, I think we need to amend it to make sure that it does cover whatever project. Yeah, I don't think you main. specifically had to, uh, for either either category where we were planning yeah. on using it. For, so, for stormwater, because we had to use it for yeah. utilities. Yeah, so, it had to be used for utilities, so you said stormwater is where we'd be yes. using it. Technically, so, technically, in my opinion, we could go forward and use what we've already got, because stormwater is included in that, that process, that, yeah. uh, that project. But it would be cleaner. Yeah, I just want to make sure that our, our, our because the U.S. Treasury Department is very specific on our plan. So I want to make sure that our plan is covers whatever projects we may want to use or not use. If we don't, if we end up not needing to use it, no problem. We'll just send it back to the U.S. Treasury and call it done. Well, I mean that, that's. <laughs> but we need to make I, I thought, sure I thought, we, were, I thought we were very prudent how we initially set it up. We made it the utility would be used for storm water. The utility. Well, water it had water, storm water. The only one I don't believe we listed was. Water. <coughs> That's right. We had storm water and we had the uh, general water, uh, which uh, we're doing for the, uh, the loop line, line the deer, deer run. Uh, but I thought we were very prudent. I'll double check by it. Being I just ambiguous with it because you might have the project that gets changed. But the one over here is continuing on. I'll double check it and make sure. I, 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 off the top of my head, I just cannot remember unless the attorney for does it. Over there, but uh, I'll verify that. That it, it's not a big deal. We do need to make any amendments just to make so it. So it's okay that they mm -hmm. that we would be changing the call. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. very fluid. Okay. You just have to have a plan, but it can be fluid. That's good. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I, again, I would like to see it written so it's a bit ambiguous. 
but it does talk about the utilities. That that's what that's what it be used for. I mean, if there's no matching grant coming through on this project, uh, it may not happen in its inception. Correct. When it's laid out. So. And, and again, it's it's money that we may not even need to utilize. So, I mean, we just before we spend it, we have to have a plan. Right now, we have two commitments that we have to spend it for. That was our water main loop and the health department. So those two pieces have to come out of that money. So that's why yeah. I want to make sure that the yeah. plan is actually updated if we need to make any changes before I cut any checks. Okay, so you'd like to see some specificity? No, it doesn't need to be specificity. <laughs> say that. Pretty Easy for that. you to say. <laughs> so I'll review it okay. and just to okay. cover it. I just it make I just wanted to give you guys a heads okay. up that we may have to bring that back next month for a revision for an amendment. Uh, I know some of you have been involved in that project and some haven't, but you have a general idea. If you read the newspaper article, the county was quoted putting in what we're uh, collaborating. I had pretty much laid it out for you. We're going to open up the south end of town there. Our part of it that we've been working on for a year is connecting uh, Peachtree and right on through past the Schnabel tier, right out to Highway 14, which we believe will open up that southern end down there for, for development. Anybody have any questions or comments or concerns? Or? I, go, I go back and say again, if we can't put the monies together, we're not going to stick our neck way out. Uh, we're going to continue to be conservative in that fiscal responsibility area. And if we tend not to be shot, it'll kill me. So, you know. <laughs> now, any questions? Oh, Wes? Are sidewalks, just for clarification, because I didn't hear from the county, are sidewalks planned on both sides of Apache, the, ex the extension? No, I don't believe it's both sides. I just one side. one side. No, on Apache sidewalks, I thought were on both sides. I don't the think design so. plan. I, I don't think so. It I was think. one side on Peachtree and both sides on Apache. We'll let's we'll pull the plans yeah. out and verify okay. that for you. But I I was thinking Peachtree. It was just the one side. The north Do you side. remember, Ruth? I think two sides would make sense for Apache only. Yes. But Peachtree it didn't make sense because right. of the uh, I want to say ditch, but whatever the that fence line right there, they didn't right. have enough room. But no we'll place. verify that for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and down State Road 14 was only one side. That's the north We're side looking north right side. down the north side at this point. We'll look at that. I, I'm, I'm thinking it was only one side. She's thinking it was two sides. We'll check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got the design plans we, laid out. Uh, again, we were trying to give the service and be as frugal as we could. Okay, any, anything else? Good, good question. All right. We will <coughs> move on to ordinance resolutions. Uh, we've got uh, a water tapping fee amendment, ordinance, ordinance 02 that And it's nice that we've got uh, our water superintendent here, and you've been highly involved in this. Would you like to explain what? That's about who's our largest than that would be Mr. Holland. Right over there. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, at least you call him Mr. Holland. So yeah. we, we reached out to Andy for some clarification and we talked with Eric Walsh from Baker Tilly. And we just want a clarification on when somebody develops property as in a subdivision or something large enough that they put their own utilities in and then grant them over to the city at the end um, for our maintenance inventory. Um, do they still have to pay all the tapping fees and what fees do they have to pay? So we reached out to Andy and, and Eric and asked for their advice and their information, which thank goodness that we have Andy because he's so good at it. But um, And basically in clarification, we will waive those fees um, for the tap fees um, if they're developing it so that we're not basically hitting them twice with it. They're, they're paying for the infrastructure to be put in the ground and develop it all and then hand it over to us to put in the inventory 
there's no sense then charging them for all the tap fees when they've done it all. So on the development and that's side. That's worth then the buyer coming in. Yeah. We pay the tap fee. Yeah. If it's handed over to us and then there's still ten lots that have to be developed, then unfortunately those ten people would still have to pay their fees once it's deemed the cities. Um, but until it's the cities, there is no fees besides the one time connection fee. And then the people that purchase so for instance if if the developer puts something in their name up here at the water office, they would still have to pay the system development charge per the size of the meter and their meter deposit, but they wouldn't have to pay the tap fees. So we just asked for the clarification to be done so that we all would know going forward for the future what, what that looks like and how to let the developers know what, what the fees will actually be. So this doesn't represent a change in practice in the way you've been doing it. It just clarifies right. uh, for someone to read the ordinance to clarify. Clarifies the ordinance. Right. Yeah. It actually changes the wording in the ordinance. So we've got to have a, have a city council approval for that. Yes. Do I have a motion to read ordinance 02-2022? Um, Title only, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> Second by Ruth. By title only, those in favor? <laughs> you let him move the vote. Okay. Ordinance number 2 2022, an ordinance to amend the city code 52.018, tapping fees. I'll read two more times and then you'll get read. Okay. Any, any discussion? Motion for the second reading of Ordinance 02 2020. Second. second. Wilson made the motion. Goodman second. Uh, those in favor? Okay. <clears throat> ordinance number 2 2022 and Ordinance Zoom City Code 52.018 tapping fees. Okay. Discussion? Do I have a motion to suspend the rules and go to the third reading by title only? So moved. <laughs> now we've got now we've got stereo going on down here on the right side. Okay, it's moved by uh, Wilson and seconded by Thompson. Those in favor? Okay. Ordinance number two dash twenty twenty two, an ordinance to amend city code two point zero one eight tapping fees. Okay. Any discussion? Those in favor of accepting ordinance? Right. Move for the adoption of ordinance two dash twenty twenty two. Goodman has moved for the acceptance of 0-2022, 0 02-2022. 0 second? Second. Seconded by Smith. Those in favor? Everybody. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, resolution 8-2022, area plan comprehensive plan amendments. Those are, those are what Heather just read to us. Um, do I have a motion for a reading of uh, resolution 08-2022? No move by title only. Okay, by title only. Second by Wilson. Those in favor? Okay. You're in favor? Okay. <laughs> You're fine. Resolution number 08-2022, a resolution of the City of Rochester to adopt amendments to the Fulton County Zone Ordinance, Subdivision Control Ordinance, and the Comprehensive Plan. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion for acceptance of resolution 08-2022? So moved. Moved by Goodman, seconded by Wilson. Those in favor? Okay. Thank you. Okay, that brings us then to our department heads. Uh, Chief Butler, would you start us out? Reading of my fire report by title only, the month of July 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> I like it, Tom. That was well played. I think we let him off the hook. <laughs> Month of July, uh, auto fire alarms two in the city, one in Rochester Township. Structure fires one in the city. Vehicle fires one in the city. Brush grass fires four in Rochester Township, two in Newcastle Township. Mutual aid fires one in Liberty Township. Accidents two in the city. Four in Rochester Township, two in Richland Township. Medical assist, 19 in the city, 12 in Rochester Township, two in Richland Township. Gas leaks, two in the city. 
Rescues, one in the city. Animal, animal rescues, one in Rochester Township. Service calls, one in the city. Canceled calls, three in the city, two in Rochester Township for a total of 63. We conducted one night of training. Pending your questions, that concludes my report. Any questions for the chief? Thank you, chief. Chief Shots? Uh, you've got the numbers there for the month of June and July. <clears throat> uh, June, we had 537 calls for service. July, 557. Uh, 17 and 27 people incarcerated, and then you have the crimes that those people are lodged for. <clears throat> um, all pretty much standard stuff on that. Other than that, uh, Brady Briggs has graduated the academy. He is back this week, but now we're losing Bryce Michael. He went Monday for a physical assessment and starts the academy next Monday. So we got one back, and we're losing another one. We're still in the hiring process trying to replace our last officer. Yeah, when, well, when you say you, one's going to be out of uh, out of the loop here for a while going to school. So. Yeah. I yeah. hate to hear you say you lost one. Yeah. Is that no, no, no. That no, has no, connotations. Yeah. 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 I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. losing one yeah. from the road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes me feel better. Yeah. 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 Any, uh, any questions for Chief Shots? Thank you, Chief. Thanks. Um, Derek? Oh, awesome. Um, water department monthly duties for the month of July. Um, the top eight are our normal duties. Um, digs that were performed, we fixed a service line leak at 316 Jefferson Street, service line leak at 929 Madison, and fixed a service line leak at 1010 Wabash Avenue. And we made a new one inch tap at 118 West 4th Street. And then call outs, Randy Carr was called out on the 1st at 415 to 310 Pontiac Street for a meter horn leaking. Um, that meter horn, new meter horn was dropped off for the plumbers to install. And then Joe Murray was called out on the 6th at 345 to 1208 Elm Street. Yep, it's it's something minute, but uh, they had no water and it was a kitchen faucet. The screen was plugged in it. Um, but at the time, we had no idea what the call was besides they had no water. <coughs> Um, and then Chris Tao was called out on the 11th at 5.29 p.m. to 1702 Ewing Road for a potential water leak. The water leak was the homeowner's responsibility. And then Carr was called out again on the 23rd at 1.45 p.m. to 1306 Washington Street for an emergency locate for a gas leak. Other than that, that's all I have. Any questions for Derek? That's, uh, I'm just going to request we don't have too many of those plugged up screens. Yeah. Button. Me too. Yeah, Me too. Yeah, that's, yeah. I didn't know they provided this. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking. Uh, what they failed to tell you, know, you is uh, <laughs> when you get the call, it's I have no water. It's not. They don't I have, have no water, water just to the kitchen yeah. faucet. <laughs> right. so, I'll, bet, I'll bet you got on the call sheet now. Ask if the screen has been replaced or looked at. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know what a plumber would do. <laughs> There'd be an hefty fee. Yeah. No. <laughs> Okay, good job, Derek. Any questions for Derek? Uh, you did have that issue where the fire hydrant got hit, right? Uh, yeah, that'll be on next month's report. Okay. Alrighty, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Dwayne? Other than our uh, daily street maintenance, uh, we have a 6th Street Mill Creek project. We have the guardrail up. We had curbs put in uh, last week. We're still waiting to have uh, the blacktop put down. EMB was supposed to do that last week, but then their equipment broke down. So uh, we still have that to do, and then um, a little bit of the landscaping, and that part of the project will be done, and then waiting until this fall, then where we can do the clean out on Minnow Creek. Uh, we also have a paving list we've been working on. Uh, more to come on that. Uh, that's being developed, and then um, have um, quotes done on that. On the park side, uh, pickleball court is done except for the perimeter fence. Um, that is, uh, we're waiting on the uh, the fencing material for that. Once that's in, then we'll have the perimeter fence put in and the pickleball court will be done. But it's been being used uh, quite a bit already. Um, so uh, uh, that's been been a plus. You know, I'm gonna get here. Sure. You're right. I've noticed that too. It's being 
heavily used. Do you have any defense? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, they, I got stopped one day uh, by some of the players wanting to know when the fence was going to go up so that they didn't have to chase their balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, yes, yeah, so uh, uh, it is being used quite a bit, and uh, so that's, that's been a plus. Uh, I think people are happy with it. Uh, the pool hours, we extended those. Um, after school started, normally we would close the pool. Um, we thought we would try uh, this year to extend the hours to the Labor Day uh, for weekends only, just because of the weather being still nice. Um, try to utilize the pool a little more, and so far uh, uh, we've had people in on the weekends, so I think that's that's been a positive also. So uh, uh, once uh, we get done uh, this month, then we'll look at the numbers, see if it really makes sense as far as cost to, to keep it open. Uh, but uh, more to come on that. And that's really all I have. If you have any questions? Any questions for doing? So there's no set date for the closure of the pool right now? Labor date. Labor oh, yep. Labor date. Yeah. And also at that time we'll be closing the uh, splash pad at the park. Okay, are the folks who, uh, who sold the splice pad, are they coming down to work on the uh, shutdown of it? At this point I'm not planning on that. I'm planning okay. on us taking care of it. Okay. Any questions for you, Wayne? Okay, thank you, Wayne. Uh, reports of committees. Uh, we have uh, the downtown partnership folk here. We don't have uh, David Heidi here. We got uh, Area Planning Commission. Ruth Tender gave us some stuff. What, uh, what you got? <coughs> we approved a new subdivision five houses for Skidmore. Um, there beside the walking trail, beside the nipple plate trail. Right. So the back side of the houses will be the nipple plate, and then they're utilizing a row. So they've got five different lots to sell. Uh, they all meet the requirements size wise. Right now, it's still, it's not city, so they'll have to put in their own. Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, 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 that is an in city, right? Right, no, it's not. Okay. I, I did talk to him afterwards and say, hey, you might want to give a shot at a look see. I don't know if you're too far away. But Where is it located at? <clears throat> you know, I, I know on Wabash, but is it on the other side of their drive? Yeah, we've, got yes. we've got infrastructure pretty close. Yeah. Cause, cause so I did, and he thought it was a good idea to come and at least ask what the criteria was. So he might be stopping in and visiting. Because they talked about actually, when they brought it across Wabash to feed some of those houses that are already there, mm -hmm. putting a T and a valve to go south, and they, they chose not to do that. So I think the valve is there for an expansion, I think. I'll have to look at the prints, so. We've got sewer there as well. Okay. I, I took that opportunity. Thank you. Actually, see, it's hard for me to set up more than one I think yeah. I brought that across <laughs> Wabash as well. I think, I think, that, I think so. We have to check all that out because they, I didn't know you know, if, 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 if the assessment is a situation we'll go through pretty smoothly, we ought to get it, get it our staff's assessment, we ought to get it uh, brought into the city. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so he, he liked the idea, so he will be visiting before he, well, if he did that process, with the properties along Hickory. So okay. he went through that process when he developed that. Steve did? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, he's, so he's been through the annex. Because there's, yes. water, there's okay. water and sewer that comes off the of Hickory that goes behind all them houses. And yeah. then before you get to the end of that row, there's a, a line that comes across. So if you see the hydrant out on Wabash, there's a line that comes straight across from that. Well, that would certainly clean up a whole lot for that situation. And also it would leave the <clears throat> That's what I suppose. I mean, it would cost yeah. them to it would cost them just to develop it to there where they need to go. Sure. That'd be on them, but yeah. 
that's but, a whole lot. But still. It's, the same, it's basically the same thing as what the FEDCO's doing on Blackwater. Yeah. They would have to continue the main to get down to there, and yeah. then... It's a good thought, Ruth. Thank you. Which Skidmore already Ruth did that correction yeah. all batch once, so... I figured if he came and it didn't work, it doesn't work, but if you don't know to ask, you know... It never hurts to ask. That's right. Yeah. Is there anything else going on? But that was it. Okay. Yeah. Any questions for Ruth? Thank you, Ruth. Uh, Brian, anything for Fedco? Yeah. Um, as Dirk said, Blackwater is continuing. Uh, good news, the water line's in place. The bad news, the sewer line wasn't uh, where it was shown on the plans. Uh, the road's going to it's gonna interfere with the road. So we there's a quote to extend the sewer line. Uh, waiting on a quote to see about adding the laterals. <coughs> Quote, as it stands now, is $9,240, um, which is not any funding that Fedco currently has. Um, Brian, can I add to that? Sure. Only half of that water main is done. It's all in, just only half of it's past the back tees. Okay. They haven't. They flushed the other in one time, but they haven't taken their back tees yet. What was done was to, uh, Get to sat satisfy the requirement of the one to get to Mosh yeah. 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 And I was in conversation with Thomas Escobedi and they were asking potential for water service lines to be ran across the road as well before. Did I say it was done? You, you did. The <laughs> water line is in place, that, that was a report. Yeah. I, um, I do know that they were talking service lines to get across to at least three of the lots. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, while, while we're there, it would make sense to see what it would take to get all that stuff run so we don't have to keep going back and digging up and not disturb a road that goes in. Um, yeah. So there, uh, I forwarded to the council um, Inside Indiana Business. That kill was the lead story. Um, I got that today. I'll get you. I have it. Okay. So I got that for you. Um, today, our economic development specialist from uh, Mayor Barton's office. Okay. Um, today we met and started um, revamping the bylaws for board approval. Um, turned over to the attorney. He's going to get it typed up and we'll be presented to the board. Um, and other than that, we're you know, rolling out. According to the plan from the consultant thus far, uh, so the next step will be filling that director's role. Okay. Any questions for Brian? Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, no other questions. Uh, Park board. Oops. No report. No report. Council on aging and BCA. BZA meets uh, tomorrow night. I'll be unable to attend, but it's kind of interesting because last month they reported that the uh, item in front of the uh, BZA board was a, a new house, and evidently at the time last month they had not decided on whether it'd be a covered balcony on the lake side of the house or not and so now they're back this month to ask for a variance on a covered balcony on the back of the house so does that make a, a pitch issue out of the yeah yeah that, that's always a late problem yeah. yeah then uh for council on aging uh, just a very brief report for transpo everything's going great and smoothly uh, they're continuing to build up uh, rides and they are now averaging about a hundred trips a day uh, so uh, those numbers are still climbing and for whatever reason again uh, Fulton County and our transpo is rebuilding at a quicker percentage than those around us so uh, not really sure why that's happening 
Then there was a very uh, robust uh, report from the RSVP people whose uh, trips are being very well uh, attended and uh, October 20, they've added another day trip on October 29 to Marshall, Michigan for the <laughs> Cornsville Turkeyville dinner and show. I never heard of the, uh, that show, but evidently it's uh, on the list of pretty nice things to do. So uh, there's a group going up there. Uh, the tax preparation work that they did, uh, they've been a little bit disappointed in the IRS, if you can imagine that. The uh, refunds have not been coming in very quickly. Uh, one of the things they think they can do is they're going to become a VITA site next year for the IRS, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. And uh, what that is going to do for them is give them more access to those uh, reports and uh, be able to report to people a more accurate and uh, speedy process of getting uh, returns. So not, uh, you know, uh, it just helps those people that need help and that's what they're doing. Are it's, these IRS uh, folks coming in to help these people? No, are actually. Uh, I would think that would be a conflict. Yeah, yeah no, Anne and her assistant are going to school to get certified to be a VITA or VITA, I'm not sure which it is probably by the uh, site and uh, when they pass that um, schooling they'll be able to be a certified by the site okay so and then uh, in September I think it is uh, the 15th 14th and 15th or 15th and 16th I'm not sure uh, Rochester Fault County is hosting all of the RSVP directors around the state. I think there's 10 districts. And uh, they'll be coming here for a two-day meeting. And they will also volunteer in a project around Rochester. And uh, all, the, all those directors will help in that project. They haven't decided on which project to use yet. But uh, I that's it for my uh, report. Is there are questions? 100 trips a day. 100 trips a day. They're right at that number. <clears throat> are they still working on the gas contract? They're not being they, pressured. They are contracted, actually. Yes. And, yes. Yep. We, and they are set through 23. So. Oh, great. Yeah. We've been doing some, uh, Mandy, uh, or Andy, Randy, or here, Randy Williams, he'd be reporting we've been doing some work on the building and such, replacing some of the LED outside lighting. Okay. Uh, I understand there was a project going on to put LED lights inside. Yes. And, uh, right. Do you know, is that completed yet? Yeah. Do you know? Yes. Okay. Right. So, so nice things. Yes, it's fun to see the building uh, back together. If you are interested in, uh, do you, do you all get the newsletter from? Uh, yes. Council on Aging. We yes, do now. I, I get it. I, I think we get two up here because I think one goes directly to you, and then we get one here at City Hall. It's really easy if you want it, and uh, just tell me. And I'll make sure you get on the list. Uh, it's really worthwhile to, to get. There's, there's a lot of activity uh, that goes on in that building that most people are unaware of. So but if you want that uh, newsletter, there's a lot of information in it. And uh, certainly glad to get it to you. If you let me know, that would be fine. 
It's actually, you know, Maria, it really is. It's quite a thick. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a nice it. newsletter. Mm -hmm. It's pretty colorful on the outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's not a uh, financial burden, for them, why don't, why don't you just include all the council members for it? Okay. It, it's really a nice, informative newsletter. He says every once in a while there's a picture of Councilman Smith in there. <laughs> and the mayor. <laughs> Once in a great while, yeah, the mayor. And you can decide if you want to go eat lunch there someday. They, they print the whole menu for the month. Yeah. And uh, you just let them, give them a call, just let them know you're coming. And Who prepares those meals? They don't do it right there, do they? The lunch? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the new, uh, more. Yes. What was her first name? <laughs> Terry. Terry. Terry Moore. Terry, thank you. How many? Uh, can you forget that? Yeah, in the cafeteria there. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Councilman Smith? Thanks, Marty. Yep. Uh, solid Waste and Animal Adoption Center, Councilman Wilson. Those groups have decided to meet every other month, so okay. we did not meet this month. Here. And Eric did a nice job telling about the water department. Okay, do we have any uh, legal issues? Nothing. Attorney we Perkins, any nothing we haven't already discussed. Okay. Uh, any ADA concerns, Shada? None that have been brought to me in the last month. I haven't heard anything either. I would uh, suggest any of you who are getting out of about a little bit all you guys do, run over and take a look at the uh, uh, progress and such that Dwayne has made over on the Minnow Creek project. Drive down six feet, actually, cross it. Other than having it paid yet, really, really looks nice. You can look up one side and down the other and see what the big pipe is doing for Minnow Creek. It's working very well. Haven't had any flooded. Uh, Flooded properties yet, have we? No. Yeah. It's worked well. It's working good. Okay, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn if there's nothing else. So moved. Made by Goodman, seconded by Thompson. Those in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.